What if one day you found the universe, passed out on your couch? And what if it was talking in its sleep, and then you realized it began answering your questions through its subconscious mumbling? Well, you just found access to absolute truth and answers from the universe. You could ask anything. Should I take this job? Are block crocs really for me? Or what about placing anything and everything on a scale of absolute truth and goodness from the Buddha to mayonnaise? Well, like anyone who has discovered how to access absolute untethered truth from the universe, it starts at a crappy after-school job. You see, when I was a teenager, I worked in a bookstore. Pretty fun job. Even though the manager kind of looked like that one psychic Harry Potter teacher. Yep, <laughs> she actually did claim to be psychic. She used to open the shop every day, ringing this little cleansing bell, and then immediately afterwards smoked like 10 packs of cigarettes. Anyway. While working the counter late one night, two older gentlemen came into the bookstore and asked if I had a book called Power vs. Force, The Hidden Determinants of Human Behavior. So I typed it in search on the computer and apologetically told them, nope, sorry, we don't carry it. But that led to one of the strangest encounters I've ever had. They gave me a brief description of the concept of applied kinesiology and muscle testing. They explained that all of the most profound secrets in the expanse of the universe could be revealed and unlocked to me. Herein lay the key to unraveling the cosmos's deepest enigmas concealed within the sinews of our very own bodies with one simple method. Query the universe with your question, and then try to push someone's arm down. What? Okay, I make fun, but that encounter was probably one of them that ended up shaping my interest in alternate theories of reality and the love for pseudoscience, even if I don't really buy into like 99% of it. But here we are. It's fun. By the way, it just occurred to me that like if they had access to truth across like the expanse of all reality, why did they have to ask like some nerdy kid at the counter if they had that book? Anyway, so one of them had me hold my arm out straight and ask me a series of questions before lightly pushing down my wrist. The idea was that if the answer to the question he was asking was truthful, I would resist better than if it was a falsehood. My arm would be stronger with truth and weaker with falsehood. And I wish I could remember what his questions exactly were, but I do remember him asking about Jesus and Buddha, it was a strong response. And then something like cancer, a weak response. But what was kind of crazy is that he asked me things I had no clue what they were, and I got different responses for each of them. For example, I'm almost positive he asked me about the Akashic Records, and at the time I had like no idea what that even was, but I remember getting a strong response. Do with that information what you will. All right, so this video is about one Dr. David Hawkins, and more particularly, his study and theories of applied kinesiology, muscle testing, and his map of consciousness. His book, Power vs. Force, is all about accessing the subconscious of the universe. Pretty fun. Dr. Hawkins was a psychiatrist, physician, researcher, and spiritual teacher known for using the existing concepts of applied kinesiology and muscle testing as a gateway to explore levels of consciousness to determine truth from falsehood in an absolute universal way, tapping into that sleeping frat boy universe on the couch. His book, Power vs. Force, explores the dynamics between power and force in human consciousness. Think of it like power as a self-evident strength of goodness and being, confidence, that sort of thing. And force is a lower level action that uses force to make something submit. It's kind of like the difference between wanting to follow a powerful leader because you believe in them versus being forced to follow a leader because of fear or something. His famous map of consciousness rates ultimate truth from certain attributes and emotions like shame versus acceptance, but we'll talk about the map of consciousness here in a bit. Ultimately though, Dr. Hawkins' book is about encouragement to cultivate personal growth, spiritual awareness, and positive change in themselves and the world. It's a self-help book essentially. But this is Theory Inc. We don't want no self-help. We want crazy theories on reality, so let's jujitsu kick self-help into the trash and get into the science of applied kinesiology. Applied kinesiology and muscle testing. I'm just kidding. There actually are a lot of good self-help takeaways from his book, and we should always strive to be better people. Love you. 
So, what was all that talk about pushing down your arm and getting answers from the universe? Well, it started with a holistic pseudoscience that your subconsciously actually has an innate ability to access information about what is good for your body and what isn't. It's essentially testing your body through minuscule changes in the strength of your muscles to determine what is individually good and bad for you. Officially, Applied kinesiology, or muscle testing, is a holistic diagnostic technique that assesses the body's structural, chemical, and emotional well-being through muscle responses. It's based on a principle from Dr. George Goodhart in the scientific discovery in 1971 that muscles weaken or strengthen in response to various stimuli reflecting the body's overall state. For example, they hooked up the deltoid muscles of people with hypoglycemia and introduced them to sugar. They micromeasured sudden weakening changes in their deltoids when they consumed it, and then they tested people without hypoglycemia, and the sugar didn't provoke the same response in their muscles at all. So it was as if their body was able to tell them what to avoid. Isn't that crazy? Then, of course, they decided to get nuts with it. it is They took it one big step further and performed a double-blind experiment in which they hooked up several subjects who had no clue what was going on and measured their muscle responses to a variety of sealed manila envelopes with different substances inside. Most notably, they used natural sugars like honey and sugar, but then they also tested artificial sweeteners and even poison. Remember, the subjects had no clue what was in the envelopes. The results? were pretty consistent. Most people tested positively to the natural sweeteners and negatively to the artificial sweeteners and poison. Pretty fun, right? Today, applied kinesiology is mostly used for things like that, like providing individual insights into nutritional deficiencies, allergies, emotional stress, or other health issues. For example, you might place an apple or something in front of your face and get a strong response, but then you put some G's gloop under your nose and get weaker than a kitten on a diet of marshmallows. Chad GPT wrote that joke. I was trying it out. I don't know. I don't like it. So it's essentially a holistic method that helps you identify what your specific body coincides with, healthy and not healthy. And we should just leave it at that, right? Sounds plausible, if not downright reasonable. Nope. Let's take it to the next level. <laughs> In the late 70s, Dr. John Diamond refined this technique into a new discipline called behavioral kinesiology. This new discipline tested muscles in response to emotional and intellectual stimuli, not just physical. <laughs> and this is where the push down method comes from. When the client smiled, his or her arm would strengthen. But when the client repeated the statement, I hate you, or some other negative response, their arm would weaken. In Dr. Diamond's research, his subjects responded consistently to the point of being predictable, repeatable, and universal. Hell, let's check it out. Check it out! But it still leaves the question. How did subjects respond to stimulus they were not even conscious of? Well, now enter Dr. David Hawk Hawkins. According to him, not only can you tap into your own body's subconscious mind, but the subconscious mind of the universe. Universal Intelligence. To start with, Hawkins believes that you can trace back consciousness to a single source, and because of that shared spiritual ancestry, we can effectively tap into a universal knowledge. He observed that your muscles will simply respond with strength to any statement which was objectively true and weaken in response to any statement that was objectively false. This was consistent even when the subject had no clue whether that statement was true or false, or even understood for that matter. So because of that, Hawkins believed that those muscle responses weren't just accessing the subject's subconscious, but a universal database of truthfulness and falsehoods. Discovering truth from falsehood. But that's just it. Not everything is exactly true or exactly false. Instead, everything is on a sliding scale or spectrum of truth. So that's when they begin mapping out absolute universal truths and placing anything and everything you can think of on a scale from one to a thousand. So Hawkins' map of consciousness is divided between truth and falsehood. Under 200 is false, and anything above is true. He illustrates these levels by emotional states, the lowest being shame and the highest being enlightenment. 
Using this map, you can calibrate anything from Hot Pockets to Santa Claus. Both calibrate at 390, by the way. For example, the average person hovers around the 200 mark. Jesus and Buddha are at a pure 1000. And the Komodo Dragon? Let's see how the Komodo Dragon's making out. He's just being what he is. Komodo Dragon did calibrate at 40. Calibrates over 4, 45, 48, 47, 48. Dinosaurs, 60. Zebras, 250. You can even take into account of all the average of consciousness that ever existed for the last 23 million years. That's 212. And in case you were wondering, yes, you can increase your own calibration. If you are an angry person, say calibrating at a 150, you can improve with self-help and guidance. That said, however, the average person typically only advances about four to five points in their entire life. But don't worry, Hawkins also believes in reincarnation. So you got plenty of time and lives to figure it out. Or just reincarnate as a gorilla and jump to 275. On a side note, do you know what's kind of funny? In a lot of Dr. Hawkins seminars, he always has somebody there to test any random questions he has. Like a lady is literally right there just so she can hold her arm out. Can you imagine if you had that? Like if you had a buddy with you at all times to get answers? You could be on a date and suspect them of eating the last of the cheesy fries and then they just deny it. Olivia fairly shared the loaded cheese fries. So the original point of applied kinesiology was to uncover what individual and personal issues your body has with food or allergies. Then it evolved to apply toward behavioral health. But now you can access all the truth of the universe and find personal individual progress on a spiritual level. Also from Dr. Hawkins. And that which is more or less above 200 is true. And that which is under 200 is not true. But how do you define true? Oh, that's what the whole book's about. Yeah, yeah. man's never been able to define what is truth. Yeah, how do you? Because truth is content, but it's only true within a certain context. Right. So one reason truth has never been agreed upon is because it's not possible to discern truth unless you state in what context. But the technique what's... we use is, is tapping yeah, in, ab in absolute. The field of consciousness itself is an absolute, it is not a variable. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to discover some absolute. So what would the absolute yeah. be? What would the, the absolute be? would be the field of consciousness itself, it's which something. innately has mm -hmm. the, the capacity to discern truth from falsehood. And that brings up a very good point. Some say truth is absolute. Others say truth is subjective. What's actually kind of neat about this theory is it covers both bases. Yes, there is a literal catalog of absolute truths on a spectrum, but it can also be used to find truths on an individual level. But who knows? Sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo trash to me. Maybe, but imagine the implications if it were true. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I was thinking about covering more internet mysteries like Cicada 3301 or like the Toynbee tiles or other fun internet mysteries like that. The problem is, as you can imagine, they've been done to death. So let me know in the comments if there are any that you think I should cover. Um, I don't know, I kinda wanna branch on that way. But I appreciate you guys and until next time, stay pondering.